Hello, and welcome back to the Geek on My Sleep channel. This is Geek Out number 73, blowing right through them. Over Viridian Gate Online Cataclysm, it is by James A. Hunter, and if you are confused, he also sometimes leaves out his middle initial, also James Hunter. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a great series. We're here on the first book. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, you've been trying to sell us on listening to this book for a little while now, and yep. the day has finally happened. And just like you warned me, I burned through book one. It's super short and initially just carried on into book two and book three. So, We'll do our yeah. best to respect the spoilers, keeping it to book one. Forewarned, here we go. Um, you've summarized it oh so well so many times, Peter. Give us the plot of this story. Like We've talked a lot about lit RPGs, the different elements of why it fits lit RPG. It's always like how we get into the game. Are we in there all the time? Like... You know, details, magic, action, action, go. Yeah, yeah. So, Virgin Gate Online Cataclysm is essentially the end of the world. There's a giant meteor coming down that's about to wipe out humanity and through advancements in technology and nanobots, I believe, they end up developing a game that you can essentially have these nanobots go through and map out your uh, brain. So they go through and it's initially how they allow you to have the interaction on, you know, that way you actually feel as if you have it. So instead of stimulating like your skin, for example, and feeling the scratch, it stimulates it just in that portion of your brain to give you the, the sensation. But they essentially fully map your brain over three days where you have a one in six or sorry. Yeah. One out of six do not make it through the other five are able to fully download within the three days and become an asset of the game, a part of the game where you're essentially a NPCP non player character player. Because you're no longer, you know, you're not connected to a real body at this point. So, yeah. Anyway, you essentially become fully trapped in the game, like so many of the lit RPGs. But it takes the apocalyptic, world's gonna end, there's a giant meteor. And the way that we're still alive is there are essentially mega servers on in... A nuclear bunker buried you know in the earth and that's yeah that's what's going to save the the human race is letting nanobots download our consciousness onto a game and uh yeah living out our existence inside there but i guess how it's lit rpg is you more or less come into a fantasy realm and they they do an interesting thing where they're playing three factions where they've got, you know, essentially the Empire, the Sith, and then the Mandalorians. Not really, but yeah. Anyway, so they have Yeah, yeah. yeah. So many follow up questions about who's who in uh in the universe in the Star Wars analogy along with a lot of other follow-up questions, but very good summarization of the plot, the book, for both of our benefit. Where do we end at the, at the end of book one? That way- The th end of book one. So we just defeated the Moss Hag, which was our big battle to after getting or so. Yeah, anyway, so we defeat the Moss Hag. We come back. We officially get anointed into the clan. 
I'm drawing a blank on the name, Ma Matel. You're officially a Matel, and he unlocks his uh, Dark Paladin class. Then the Chief drops the, the bomb on him about the token or the coin that he got from the dungeon is actually for land ownership. And he at first he's like, oh, that's not a big deal. You know, you can always do a guild or do whatever, but it's much more. It's where you can accept NPCs into your faction. You can play Civilization Builder, you know, build a... Uh, Oh, war aspects, build uh, merchant aspects, build crafting aspects. You know, he goes into a little bit of details, which is exciting. Um, and then, yeah, after that, we talk to, oh, I want to say it starts with an S, but the Overmind who is aware. Sophia. Sophia. And Sophia, ironically enough, is also... Um, our main characters, Tom, Tom, Siri, Alexa, AI controller, um, yes. which I, yes. I need to catch on the bandwagon, but you know, welcome hesitant. everybody who is listening to this open with speakers, open set yeah. with speakers I, as I we activate all the minions. Um, but yeah, so well done. Thank you for helping us wrap on the tail end there. That way the rest of us can keep the dialogue to book one and keep the spoilers to book one in the chat and comments below. Again, there's so many things there that I just want to pick apart on just, yes, yes. Um, one of the criticisms I've come across when reading it online, and I definitely see it, is if you have an MMO background and you are familiar with these types of books, the language just clicks. Um, I did catch going back through and listening to it again. It's like we do lean pretty heavily on some of the terms that you just, you know, the culture, it comes a lot easier. Um, don't know if you agree or disagree. You're making faces at me, Pete. I, um, I was thinking about it and I would say yes, because uh, I am indoctrin indoctrinated. Um, yeah, but I would also say it's definitely way low on the stats scale. Because yes. we get a little bit of stats. It's but not even in your face the information the we get, it's a very limited repertoire. Where I think it talks about once you unlock something, you get seven levels of it which is not very many and it kind of says it without saying it but it's more the application of power versus power and Your that was something quote. i thoroughly enjoyed throughout it because when it's it's situational you know he, when he we're fought smart like yeah, a yeah. lot of a lot of it wasn't just pure raw like you said power there were several moments where they had to think strategically. They had to think tactically. They, and not too much to the extreme, but just like any uh, dungeon crawl pull, you know, you got to be smart and take out your key players in order to shift the odds in your favor. Um, and it was well done. Did it have enough combat for you, Peter? So... No, never. But enough. it, like you said, it's sh the first book wraps up well, gives you enough information without being too much, so it's digestible. Um, but I did marathon mode the first four books, and then start on the firebrand the first three books, and then my week ended, and I had to come back to the first book, so. Still yeah. shorter than a Stormlight Archive book. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 I'm there with you. I got through the first three before I had to stop. Maybe I got through the fourth, but we, we won't get into that. Definitely think this is going to be a series we continue having a lot of fun with it. 
really curious. You were telling us a bit about it in another stream, but he does a lot of um, collaboration with other authors, right? He does. Have you um, gotten to any of those? I think the first four are all the main story arc. In a main in Prime. Yeah, so actually I can click a couple buttons here. So the first three, four, we stay with Grimjack are EMT living in his trashy apartment and that we hear about. That's also and criteria for being the main character of a lit RPG. You have to be a EMT or medical professional. I'm, I'm, we're noticing some trends. We need to make some content about that. Um, though, as you know, it, it does. They all line up with certain tropes and whatnot, but this one does have a unique class, which we're suckers for. Um, have tired of hearing about the epic fighter or warrior class or um, insert, you know, typical Holy Trinity type player. Uh, very oh, rarely well, that, a support class. Be... And our boy here, he's not really a support class, but he kind of is a support class in a way. This shadow mage, he un, or dark paladin, fit well anywhere. He kind of breaks all the so rules. So this is why you like it so much. You're I, you're anti anti. It, is, anti, a, big, anti it is a big factor. So essentially, when I think paladin, I think vanilla WoW where they pop their bubble, are invulnerable to damage, and spam flash heal. Or I played a little bit recently, and they kind of divided up their kits. They still have a bit of the defensive, but they can't do both the tank and the healing, but they can still do all three. But meanwhile, instead of allowing for the heavy armor, he's only allowed like medium armor. Mm -hmm. So it fits more with modern MMOs for having a off tank. But it's a little weird in the fact that he primarily uses, you know, get out of jail free or stealth for openers. Your, where... your shadow blink, right? He pretty much or... goes into another dimension yeah. that allows him to move around and, it, it freezes and, time in another dimension yeah and then come on like he's carrying around a war hammer and yeah, he's yeah. a shadow mage like yes it totally tickles our our fantasy about like how can we make this work right yep. and he does his little shadow blank has a timer and sits there like practicing his golf swing with his giant war hammer and then it's like, okay, time to port back to this other dimension and well, bam. Yep. Um, I think that it, was technically another book, but anyway, Oh, my bad. Um, or, yeah, he, he does that, but the golf swing part, I remember. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. But what I thought was pretty cool. So everybody having a unique starting scene, was exciting because yes. that's one of the elements of ascend online that was an accident but because he had a unique starting sequence in a different location it allowed him to not have server lag and crash and you know sad face all day so unique I, starting sequence i i have some follow-up questions on that and, and would like to go down the rabbit hole um i just went past that part in my my re-listen today and they talk about um when he's there with abby is that yeah, yeah when he's there with abby when jack meets up with abby and she kind of spills the beans about the seven ais which one of them was some like or chinese yeah some chinese yeah, the... like military you know whatever and pretty much they took over the game right locked everyone out and yeah. how we have these AI masterminds. And part of what they do is in that little fine print of the terms and service, put so much uh, legalese yeah. in there that they essentially 
in order to make the profile NPCs, you. yeah, they profile you, but the NPCs are also like data mine and a, collections, and amalgamation, of which yeah. is machine learning as we know it. And there are, yeah, Google's already doing it. Add add thirty years of advances, and they profile you and then put you on your path and pretty much like give you opportunities on what type of classes to pick. So like, as I'm listening to that, you know, everybody has different temperaments. Everybody like we've played, we've spent so much time in video games. Certain people naturally lean towards certain play styles. And that doesn't mean that they can't roll another class, but you know what I mean? They just Mm, naturally are drawn to, yeah, like uh, when we played League of Legends, I always had to play a character that I could be agile enough to where after I turret dive to get the kill, I can get myself back out of trouble because I'm going to chase that guy behind enemy lines. Um, But that's that's MOBA. For this, um, knowing that it would profile you, try to throw you down a class path, and then also have your matching npc to kind of help you adjust to the world they they talk about it being like some myers briggs type thing where you get this where where do you think you'd fall on the class spectrum what do you think uh i i don't know i and what i do like because like none of the classes are very typical and since you do start out by yourself it, it very much kind of like our medic used to play a healer. Well, that's a valid class in my opinion, but it, because of him going solo or because of only having the one guy with you and he's obviously, you know, not, eh, I guess he's a damage, but you're still missing kind of the tanking component anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it seems like, and I guess Abby kind of goes full, dps but then she's paired with a tank so that makes a little bit more sense she's more of a traditional type mage right and auto is the leader that more of the combat leader the general the like he takes charge of the situation when they get to whatever the cocaine um drug lord guys um private dungeon yeah. And um, he's the NPC, right? Mm-hmm. For Grimjack, our main character, he's kind of like a shadow mage, but he learns the stealth skill from Cutter, his NPC, and he's more of our DPS traditional rogue type yeah. character, right? Otto calls him a thief in the get-go and he's always you know it's always about me but he has a soft spot for lost souls or you know whatever whatever takes pity on grim jack um ends up encouraging grim jack like hey you know just just scalp her and collect your one gold and and the tropey emt in him he's like no i need to help her you know at least get more information and cutter's like so hold on you mean you're going to send a guy like me, who clearly, you know, has been talking about all about me over here unsupervised to go through all these loot chests while you just like, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. And he subtly throws <laughs> in there like, you, you know, if you want to help her, open your inventory. Here's how you do it. And then, yeah. 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 But the way, so other than the, pro- the profiling aside, the way they get their class is interesting. Because the old lady who's dying uh, ends up awakening the spark inside him, which allows him to utilize it. But there's a hefty penalty of Mm -hmm. you really can't use it because you got to be on your last leg at your lower 15 percent health and then be doing it. But he also ends up kind of subconsciously unlocking things due to the situation when he's uh in the dungeon before abby gets there and he's Mm -hmm. fighting the uh mobs around and he gets pinned he's in the vines and then he you know roars and unleashes his uh shadow bolt or whatnot so he's able to like 
this is what you should be doing. So I would totally, you know, try to do a couple Kamehamehas or whatnot and see if that worked. Um, so if if we were sticking with the Holy Trinity, for those that don't know, break it down. What's the Holy Trinity of MMOs? So it's tank, healer, and DPS. Tank mm -hmm. is essentially get their attention, hold the aggro, take the damage, you know, beef, not a whole lot of, you know, strength or damaging abilities, more about absorbing. Mm -hmm. Then you've got the healer who is supposed or to keep support. the tank alive. Yeah, uh, more support. and more it's becoming more utility for mm -hmm. crowd control, like freeze or snares for, for movement. Um, and then, yeah, healing up the main tank as well as, yeah, doing other stuff. And then DPS is damage per second or blow stuff up. And right. their job right. is focus on what the tank is focusing on. Don't pull extra and dish out damage. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well said. In the old school traditional days, it was, um, tank dps healer now more and more as the games get more complex um healer kind of has become support slash utility and some of that utility has bled over into other classes that also tend to do things like secondary well which i think we see a little bit in here um but if we had to go with the holy trinity which way do you think you would er, lean on so that i i have my thoughts you said Healer bleeds into support and utility, and mm -hmm. then I guess if you divide DPS, you've got range DPS, and then you've got like melee oriented DPS. Typically, range mm -hmm. DPS is glass cannon, very squishy, take them out. Um, and then you've got the melee oriented, which have a little bit more beef, typically have a lower um, DPS but mm -hmm. that's because of their armor rating and whatnot. And then you get a little bit of utility there for either the melee oriented DPS being more, I guess, dodge oriented or off tanking. That way, if things go south, they can pull some heat and dance around. Um, and then same thing with like the range, they get more crowd control for like ice and polymorph and yeah. Especially as the parties get larger and larger, and I kind of think about Log Horizon, how it's so far ahead of its time in a lot of ways with the different hybrid classes. Um, thinking back to our gaming days, like I've seen you do it all, um, and I've seen you do it all pretty well, so much to the point where I feel like you would be some weird, not weird, but unique hybrid of the two, like somewhere between like a damage... Um, off tank type deal or um, something like that. Healers are less necessary thanks to healing potions. Yeah. They and do use some, them pretty heavy in this book. Yeah, I was going to say for this book, I wouldn't say there is a healer. Um, yeah, but and then, yeah, more and more for modern games, it's, yeah health mm -hmm. potions but everything kind of comes with limitations you know yeah cooldowns performing an action can't cast a spell you know yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i um i think i would probably end yeah. up on a utility um type class playing support when i've really enjoyed mmos the most is when i'm playing um kind of on the back lines a little bit that um, I'd probably, I don't know. I could see being more melee oriented, but I guess also more so on the utility side. I had a lot of fun leveling a holy priest in vanilla WoW before you could dual spec. Um, it, it was a fun challenge to try to figure out how to get enough damage done while keeping myself healed um, to get through it. Slow grind at times. Um, yeah, I think that's mainly why I played, you know, I rolled a tank, I rolled a healer because you can get into group because everybody yes. wants DPS. Yes. Yes. They just want to, uh, yeah, yeah. 
max out those crazy damage meters, look at all I'm doing as I draw aggro away from the tank. Um, but yeah, it this book did a good job kind of easing us into it um, in that regards because we get Grim Jack and his NPC that kind of ease us through it. And then he meets up with his good female friend never dated because they're always dating somebody else or something, but maybe there's, this is their chance. Um, and her NPC and they get more of a well-rounded, um, party that way. Yeah. And yeah. And then she ducks out on us after the encounter and Grimjack is back on his own kind of pursuing his own quest line. Um, so, yeah, yeah. If just reading the first one, I was just kind of like, what? What's going on here? Right. They play it off. It makes sense. I thoroughly enjoy the Firebrand series for what I've listened to so far. Um, and it, yeah, it, it does very well there. But I guess those are other books. Yeah, yeah. That's... Only Only book one. Tune in later for books two through twenty-seven. Um, they're they're busting it out. They're busting it out. Yeah. Um, I think this is a newer narrator for us. What did you think of uh, how he did? So he did really well on Armin, Cutter. Armin Taylor. Yeah, the narrator. Continue. Yeah, he did really he, well on he Cutter. Did really well on Cutter, and it had like you know, kind of like. Grimjack keeps saying he he feels real. There, mm -hmm. there's the accent throughout it. There's the dialect. I don't know, tomato tomato yes. kind of thing. Yes. And yeah, he His does really well. His characters do on feel Cutter. unique. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We we've kind of gotten attached to a couple of our favorite series and the narrators there, so it's always a relief when you at least get somebody you can at least tolerate if not enjoy listening to it and like there are some little quirks um but every every narrator kind of has their own little quirks right that yeah, takes a minute to get used to part of my problem is when i follow a narrator i hear their voice and i picture other characters where they have a similar kind of mo or similar yeah. voice to that style character they, they only it's have not, so it's many not a voices bad thing it's just yeah occasionally i'll it's, not be paying fully attention i'll be like wait a minute what yeah why why so and so in this story i thought i was listening to whatever um it's kind of like you know we don't really watch a whole lot of tv but we hear about people where they're like oh man i see this character blah 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 and i just can't see him as any other role he always just you know Fits, oh, yeah, yeah, fits yeah, this yeah, so like, great and like that's that's what it's like for us audiobook junkies 600 yeah, books later yep, where yep. narrators doing voices and you're like wait a minute wait a minute go go back to your universe what, Whoa, what, what are you doing here i will say it means they're doing a good job because they're the selective work. people have a variety of voices and it's one of those like forward backwards things like small scale most of these books only do one narrator but it's the difference between a b movie and star wars with their full orchestra you know pumping out their anthem and you know having conductors and big studios and equipment at the wazoo yeah. and yeah. the guy with a mic yeah so so we, we talked beginning, we talked end of this book, all all the funness in there. And like every every series kind of has like its own little like, oh, I'm, I'm trying to think of the way to quantify it, right? But like trapped in another dimension, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this one, it's pretty much, like you said, like asteroid end of the world uploaded into what is looking to become like a feudalist society all over again for the i don't know if they quantified it but like pretty much the only people that were going to survive after this asteroid were like in super uh, underground bunkers so there is yeah, humanity yeah, we're going to become the ultra elite 
yeah, mole people until the dust settles. And then the bulk of people who survive, and we've seen this similar concept with, you know, like the Bobaverse. Is he alive? Is he not alive? Are they dead? You know, well, all my this only stuff. The thing is, who's dealing with the tech? I, I, I kind of was wondering if we wanted to go down this rabbit hole because if only the ultra elite are around what's what's in it for them to keep this on is there some like benefit to all this stuff when you're talking about resources in the end of the world is from this one it's kind of like or they've got the overmind have parameters to set their profile but it's kind of like a holding a lion in check with a leash made of bacon something to that effect is that this I mean, book i don't know that? but it's been so long since i've had bacon i you know that was the first thought i had <laughs> when i listened to it too i was it's like, like mm, lion bacon. leash oh yeah all about that bacon mm, that crispy salty goodness Anyway, uh, uh, <laughs> maybe that wasn't this book, but that's said in the universe, and it is very accurate. And and as far as one goes, we don't get a whole lot of insight into them, other than that is why they didn't implement people as gods from the get go. So they cheated, not cheated, to get the specialty areas where Quest. we gain some levels, and we go through the sitch. And yeah, and that was so in regards to that, I thought the little like side quest, main quest, side quest thing was pretty cool where he's off doing his own thing. And then it's like, oh, and here's a druid or tree folk and gets the quest, goes through the dungeon, turns it in. You know, that's what helps him be initiated to uh, the clan. Mm-hmm. and add some validity to his stuff um i also thoroughly enjoyed the combat through the dungeon dive it was a little short for my taste but you know they talk about doing the traditional pulls hey rogues go over here you know get ready to do your crazy damage on your targets we're gonna pull this like normal you can tell that james hunter is a gamer and we know you always want more combat. Like if there's if there's any plot or connecting backstory outside of lore, they're wasting page length. Like they need it needs more combat, right? Well, uh, it was he does well. It progresses the story. It, yeah, if you, we, if we you get think a about traditional it, though, polls, we get compared, our... Compared to some of your other books that you rate so highly, I just know where, where the combat value skew is for you. Like, in this book, we have the opening scene with Cutter tutorial. I guess we right? are kind of we always have, in combat, except We have for... the thing with the trees and the other guardian guys, like the plague on the forest. Then we have the dungeon crawl. Um, with the epic final overpowered boss, maybe, and it's then a style we have of maybe it's like not after that the much. thing with the spiders, which so, you know you get your trope. Everybody's got to get their oh, spider giant, fetish yeah, into. Book one. Book one. <laughs> it's uh, when we when we finally get around to releasing our our first lit RPG novel. I think we just need to double down on it and go all out on all the tropes we'll have the spiders we'll have the main character who was an emt we'll have the, the snarky sidekick with all the one-liners yes I, yes we our, have to our have puns. An old guy too our wise yes. old guy yes our wise old guy maybe he could we can like double them up and he could be the character with the snarky comments and go like jiraiya sensei yeah. on the puns yeah, yeah. and the and the double the double meanings um, but we got our spiders, and then we got. Oh, we did the, get the two test boss battle ba- uh, boss battles. Yeah, because we did yes. the spiders. We we're in the, and the pit, hag. Got, yeah, and then back to the spider, the little yep. fly. Um. So I guess it's more style of combat, like 
If you would say Ascend Online, that combat is thrilling. Uh, like, he's gotten so good. In Book 4, there's a scene... No, no spoilers involved, just talking combat here, where he's essentially describing the actions and counter moves, and they're dancing through the flow of battle while having a conversation, and, you know... It's it's very well intricate, like you feel like you're there. Where for this combat, it's more like, hey, do your standard stuff, your DPS, your tank, your damage, you know. And then we do it, uh, we come back, and it's like, oh, so, yeah, I totally didn't one-shot this guy, so we're doing other stuff. But, but, the good news, or the things I did thoroughly enjoy, is application of power so i totally thought it was going to be a mimic and it was going to be the chest that would turn into something i'm oh. okay and i'm glad i was disappointed and that it wasn't a mimic but yeah so we get engaged with that stuff's going on uh because he was trying to get better positioning for you know crit on a sensitive component He's able to be above the gas and all that, and then he finds the weak spot, which, I, yeah, it was very well done. I felt regard. it was well done. There are times where the author, the execution just makes you go like, really? Really? Like, I know that we can't explain how this luck stat works in lit RPGs, but, well, no, but like it, sometimes it they're just way. For this one, or, I'm with yeah, you with this yeah. one. I felt James Hunter did it well with those like clutch moments where we beat the odds, right? Yeah, um, it, it was very valuable in the story. You know, about to mm -hmm. get attacked by oh the poltergeist or whatever things, the roots, and mm -hmm. then he gets this new ability unlocked, and it totally fits. And then same thing here, where everybody's, you know feet to the fire and due to trying to find a way around he finds a way up and mm -hmm. then the comic relief which okay i'll give him that he balanced it out very well where we were you know serious trying to figure this out some oh world earth shaking illuminati beep and then we get into our standard combat and now we're in the boss battle and then we get him falling off the top and Cutter being like, oh, I'll catch you. <laughs> Face plant. And then he's like, what? You think I'm that guy over there? Uh, I don't catch damsels. I will I hope you get their, back up, though. <laughs> yeah, I take their purse and sell it to the highest bidder or whatever. But he's not really that way. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And the, going on the higher level side of things... Um, kind of what they imply with the NPC if it's doing its job right is to kind of help people adjust and cope, right? So it kind of makes you wonder with Grimjack what that says about like Cutter's banter and, you know, friendly jibing and everything to kind of help keep him in the right headspace for that whole yeah. like one in six that don't make it um, because they just can't make that transition or that leap into... Well, I am now a string of digits somewhere on a massive underground hard drive, and my know... actual body is dead in a pod that the company is going to collect. Psychological or biographical? Is that a word? Biology? I, I, if it was in your head or in they, flesh? They, they implied a number of factors to it. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. We might get more information about that later. I would love to I... get some like flashback moments and we'll probably see it with the other storylines, some other angles it's... on the end of the world and the, the backstory and lore behind why they did it the way they did it. I, I thoroughly enjoy, or I love the fact that like it's medieval Except for we've got Tempur-Pedic straw mattresses. And yeah. all our food is amazing. Like yes. a rat on a stick. Uh, yes. Yeah, we're, we're amazing. 
I kind of wondered some of that too. Um, yeah, code it in. You know, if you're gonna have to live here, why not? And um, or at least that's how from, I felt. Yeah, and from a plot point of view on like why they did it, an MMO or a fantasy thing. Um, I think enough people can relate to that type of stuff. Um, you know, enough, like if you went into the future, enough people had exposure to games and doing all those pieces. Um, well, that's where like, this doesn't really hold a whole lot of game elements. Like, yes, we get a quest pop up. Yes. It kind of all ties in together, but it really feels like you fell out of the sky and this dude's been here his whole life, uh, you know, however long he's actually been there. You feel like you're ported to a fantasy realm. Um, yeah. And I, I'm trying to think which series it was, but, um, oh, when we were reading Chris Fox's stuff and his little nod to Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman with, yeah. like, Dragonlance. And, you know, on my journey here, I see kind of like, uh, culmination of these different ideas and concepts. And in a lot of ways, this story feels like a traditional fantasy story in like the dragon Lance realm, where it's not overly con like stat heavy dropping all this stuff. It just feels like these people are living in this fantasy realm. And even the NPCs talk about it being another realm and the gods, we just finished, um, Hyperion and some other different books and no spoilers, no spoilers, but the thought of an AI God, it's not a new concept. So here you have like at the end is when Sophia, one of the um, AI masterminds, the God overminds the gods of this realm reach out just like they do in the fantasy books. And you're like, Hey, I need you to help me fight this evil and, you know, you are my champion. Let's go forth uh, as you but, do my bidding. But <laughs> it was tastefully done where she shows up as his normal bot name voice. But he's like, wait a minute, the voice sounds off. So because she's actually there and set it inside his head. And then she that was, does that have was a funny comic. Moment. She has good comic relief where she's like, sometimes sentience are just so d dense or whatever so she she does play it well uh, even though ephemerals. it's very yeah even though they're not ephemerals yeah it's very dramatic and yeah it it ties it together well um yeah 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 we like yeah we get a lot of abilities very close to the end and mm -hmm. he utilizes them well um as much as I felt like it was short, it it ended in a decent spot for me. I yeah, would have enjoyed at least well. another four hours on this story because I, I think it doesn't even go nine hours. I was trying I to check my, my phone there. Timing is all off because the uh, speed. It, yeah. If you were listening at one x speed, this is eight hours and forty four minutes. So like when I was trying to listen in bits and spurts today to go through it at two and a half, three X speed, like I, I got through most of the book in a couple of hours. Um, and it's a really popular series. We are slacking the fact so... that we are just now getting to this over 5,000 audible ratings. That is huge for the lit RPG it... subgenre. Yeah, it is seven books currently i don't know if that's the end oh that's what i brought up so he's got the viridian gate archives which this is book one of um this is a editor review viridian gate online recommends recommended reading order so the whole seven of the main series then the three for the illusionist series VGO, that looks interesting imperial in Innative? Are you able to share that on the totally screen? Got it. it. You got Words it pulled up the reading list. Things. I guess I can click a couple buttons. This is why we're in the uh, the audio realm, right? Uh, ba bow. Yeah, yeah. So stuff here. Reading order. Okay. And 
Yeah, so the little bit I've done for the first four here, and then I jump to the Firebrand first three. And in regards to Firebrand one and book one, they they tie together nicely. But then as it kind of continues, the it's not a one for one, in my opinion. So okay, as far as the overall order, timeline goes. Yeah, they they mesh well. Yeah. Okay. But Good to know. Good to he know. He has a recommended reading order, and that is a big thank you. Good job. Do more stuff, James A. Hunter, because there are too many times I'm like, you have words, and you don't have a number. Give me a number. You are number what? Um, as well as side quests and other things. Uh, he yes. also goes on to say yes. that everything technically is a standalone or designed to be an individual. But I will say after reading Cataclysm and Firebrand, amazing. And I would say... You get so much more of the bigger more. picture. It, it's what I right? love from Dakota Kraut where... Yeah. He adds elements of other series or origin series into it, and it's Easter eggs. It's the ahas. It's the in-depth, but those are collaborations. Anyway, yeah. Good. Great, great book. Quick read. Low on the stats. Apocalyptic S. Um, it does a good job explaining things enough to where it's not hand waving we don't get super detailed on the tech side of things they don't no, really fill in all the back strong elements of it because it's a pod Absolutely. it's nanobots and then every time he falls asleep and he wakes up he's experiencing severe pain but you gotta i wish i knew more because like the fact that eating cures a lot of it makes it me makes, makes you wonder, wonder because yeah. the nanobots stimulate the sensation or your brain to give you the sensation of feeling for interacting so is it true that is that against americans you know we're just so gluttonous that food satisfies all our I, aches I, you know, or just, just stimulating just, that part of our brain makes us happy. Anyway. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. It, uh, this could just be hey, a bit. Oh, thank you ahead. for stopping by. Yeah. Thanks, White Thatch. Um, Bye. See ya. Um, so. I and this is where. Perhaps it was my muse running away from it or with itself um, based off your feedback. But I really felt that they talk about it as a transition, right? And maybe the NPCs talk about it as a transition later on with the adventurers that come to there. But if you think about it, what makes virtual reality so incredible is the virtual reality part, like what we can actually physically sense the feeling of stuff, like the sensory input on our skin, um, the pain. Um, so like as, as they're scanning their brains and kind of like integrating them, they say it takes over a three day period, but like your physical self gets so used to all these other sensory inputs, right? Like taste, touch, feel, um, like if, they don't feel it's real enough, I can imagine there being that disconnect, right? Or getting that headache as your actual physical body goes hungry. And so it kind of like pulls you out of the immersion state. But if they're yeah, eating, yeah, it could of, stimulate the sensory yeah, of like, oh, with, you know, or, yeah. trick yourself. Like, um, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I, I could totally see that. For me, I was thinking it was more like in hibernation mode or sleeping, these nanobots running around, nothing being stimulated because it's still still trying to keep you asleep. And then you wake up and it's kind of like a jolt, like now you feel all these things. Right. Sensory overload. Yeah, but um, I, I don't know. It didn't go into detail. 
it's a interesting element. It's portrayed well. Um, the joy of dying and starting your second life. Uh, and that's, that's another... I remember if it was this book that said it where after the first 24 hours the log out button disappears like i for some reason expected him to utilize that element for something and i thoroughly got a, a grand old chuckle out of the guy out the window with a shotgun who his prize loot was toilet paper and yes. maybe we should all die um, yes yes but that yeah we do get a couple toilet paper references at the beginning of the book and what is so funny is this book was published in 2017, right? It's one of those uh, Simpsons did it moment. Yeah, yeah. In a way, like uh, at the time of listening to this, you know, we've been we've been going on geek outs for a while, and you know, you might be coming back listening to this at a later date. We are now past the quote one year marker of the pandemic, and toilet paper has been off and on a luxury item for some people and when um the pandemic was at its hike like there was purchase limits on toilet paper locally right yeah. like here in and, 2019 and 2020 supplies and, and everything, everything. so like is is it really that far-fetched that we would get some guy running across looting toilet paper i mean you know if i was going to take my chances or didn't have money to be uploaded um I, I might want to stock up on a bit of toilet paper before the end of the world comes. Though I think yeah. you might have bigger issues like there being no sunlight or breathable air because of all the dust I, and debris. But I, I, at, I would at least, totally transition. The at least your cheeks will be dry. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, VGO did it first. It's It's a good book. I'm glad... You added it to our uh, TBR and our geek outs. I, I definitely want to keep this in our roster. What do you think? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I am trying to restrain myself. I know you can't feel it, but there are seven books and I have hours in the day. And uh... I'm not listening to them. Part of it is credit limitations. Yes. Other part is. I do have books that I have not listened to that are it's, in there. It's a good problem to have. Yet we go back and we re-listen to some of the same books before we get to new ones on our list. And um, yeah, yeah, thanks it's to like, everybody. Uh, mints after meals. It's a palate cleanser. Right? I, I sure. I, I'm not sure I follow the transition or analogy there, but yes. Or we listen oh, to old books to, because mm, yes, yes. We, I we understand need to, that. Uh, you know, yeah. Yes, yes. Deal with this reality and stimulate our taste buds to be like, hmm, yes. I'm not dying from nanobots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Good times, good times. Speaking of so many books we haven't yeah i think it's I, your turn i appreciate everyone who joined us live it was a crazy week we pushed back our live stream this week so special thanks to everybody who was willing to switch times with us to hang out um but we were so crazy busy we didn't even pick out next week's book and we're working to to stay ahead of the game so Oh, my turn for the list, huh? So we had so much fun. All right, I'll give you two options. Or wait. Okay, sorry. I, yes, I, I said I said your turn. It's my turn. I it's my turn. You can't quiet. go back now. I'll give you two options. You ready for this? Okay. So your passion for Ascend Online. Yeah, I we've gone through four. really, really enjoy the Iron Prince War Formed. Stormweaver book one by uh, Luke Chimalenko and Bryce O'Connor. Yeah. Or, or um, another potential favorite of yours, or could be, um, it's a very different take on lit RPG coming out of drum roll, the publisher Mountaindale press 
aka our boy dakota kraut i think i saw an article about like just how crazy popular and successful he's been but the necrotic apocalypse book one ravenous a zombie apocalypse lit rpg are do we have that we have it digby graves a deceased medieval peasant with delusions of grandeur is trying to figure out how the hell he ended up in seattle 800 years after his death also why does he have necrotic magic coursing through his zombified body added Mm. to that is the fact that he made a terrible first impression the moment he woke up by lunging at the first person that came into biting range so we have i've not read that yet you have not read this yet and it's from mountaindale press and it's a not tropey let's find the tropes in it uh zombie apocalypse i just listened to something zombie oriented yeah you know you have a problem when you can't keep track of all the books you listen to um i've listened to a couple zombie books but never quite a lit rpg zombie book but just just to give them fair shout outs and i'm leaving this up to you pete um since you want to take back my choice um iron prince so those of you guys who haven't listened to some of our other stuff luke chimilenko um is one of the fathers of lit rpg in our minds kind of broke us into all the epicness um luke chimilenko we've read another collaboration of his with bryce o'connor have not read his stuff but like dragon form we're going to get to it eventually um so iron prince um he doesn't know it yet of course uh right on was born weak sickly and small afflicted with a painful disease and abandoned by his parents because of it he has to fight tooth and nail for every minor advantage life has showed him however his perseverance has not gone unnoticed and when the most powerful artificial intelligence and human history takes an interest in him things begin to change quickly granted a cad a combat assisted device with awful specs but an infinite potential for growth raiden finds himself at the bottom of his class of the galen's institute one of the top military academias in the collective blah 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 so begins the rise of a god so begins the ascent of the storm weaver we'll be accepting all quotes <laughs> on our audible narrations please go to the geek on my sleeve.com to get more information yes we'd love to read your audiobooks anyway um this for me and i think i summarized it best to you i know you haven't read um oh what's it called the beginning of uh, ender's game you haven't read ender's game but for me this book was ender game mashed with my hero academia and another anime that i can't think of where basically super soldiers get empowered with like super awesome tech combat weapons to fight against this like ultimate scourge or whatever right like humanity is at war with the boogeyman and technology is the only way we're going to be able to like fight so like to recruit them to the cause they have these battle royales just like anybody who is an anime fan um my hero academia they do kind of like you know this military school like training to become awesomeness and yes yes um all right pete you're you're two you're two i really enjoy iron prince and i have not read the other one 
I, but so I would definitely lean Iron Prince. Okay. Okay. Because just because I haven't read the other one yet, I'm excited because it's got the Mountaindale Press stamp of approval. Dakota Kraut's an instant and, buy. It, yeah. 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 Sorry. Go ahead. So yeah, I I would have to say Iron Prince, and Good. like you said, don't know Ender's Game. Definitely get the My Hero Academia, uh, underdog vibe where main character My Hero has no powers, ends up you know getting some and struggles with his He's endless the potential. So the book one is definitely. Yes. Trying to get your feet under you. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Un- underdog to the extreme. Yet again, deals with AI components. Uh, yeah. Bye. Sticking with all our favorite themes that, that we've been having a lot of fun with. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. I'm not going to let Peter oh. change his mind. Iron Prince, Warforms, Storm Breaver, book one by Bryce O'Connor. Luke Chimilenko's and one of our fan favorites, geek endorsed narrators, Mr. Luke Daniels himself, who okay. also does Ascend, Ascend Online. Online, which we were just talking about how we hear these characters and these other books and we're like, wait a minute. What are you doing here? This is the Stormweaver universe, not Ascend Online. But Luke Daniels is such amazing narrator. But if you can't hire him, you can hire us to do your voice acting for you. Geek on my sleeve, my name is Carl. My lovely co-host over there is Peter. He's making some magic on the fly to get you this very attractive cover there war formed i mean look look at all that epic awesomeness like yeah i does that happen uh e- you know okay sorry back up no spoilers yes spoilers this is one of the covers back, that back up real okay, quick okay okay in regards to this guy I, oh, I got the stuff. Anyway, we'll hear music as well. Ah, no, we won't. Uh, Sorry, more buttons. Had to at least let the bass get in there before we cut it out. All right. All right. Break it out. So, cover arts. One on the left is the original. And... I thoroughly enjoy it. That's our main boy, Grim Jack. He's figuring out that he can shoot dark energy beams from his hand. Enjoy the color scheme. Yes. One on the right is the one they're like trying to currently transition to. And I'm all fine for authors updating their covers. That way they can remarket and do better and... For example, the Divine Dungeon series, if you didn't know, was a black and white rendition or drawing, and the covers now are, um, yeah, a lot better. But who is this? Who is that? It's got the amulet, which we get, which then, you know, starts our whole main storyline quest. But we don't get to see her using her magic. And it doesn't really give me that old lady feel. And she's not like in the only scene we've seen her dying on the table. Um, It could be Sophia, but what's up with the amulet? And it's definitely not Abby because she's black yeah. with frizzy hair. Yeah, um, it's it's OK, Pete. We're no, all geeks not. here. They've made it this far. You you can let loose a little bit. Or, or I guess well, me, who, me, who is does that? It, Somebody tell me who that is. Does the the real issue? How much does it really grind your gears when you buy an audiobook, you get conditioned to look for one cover, 
and then they don't even ask you. They just change the cover art on you. I and... have a screenshot <laughs> of literally listening to this book, and in my library, it's the left cover, and on the player, it's the right cover. And I had a like half asleep, wake up, go to set it back because I did my sleep timer brain fart moment where instead of clicking play, I click back on the cover because I'm like, wait a minute, what's happening here? So, yes. Yeah. Who, yes. who is that? Who but is I thoroughly, that? I thoroughly enjoy trying to find where, oh, this way, find where the cover happens. Yes. Yes. In all its awesomeness. War formed. What time you want to do next week? Back to our normal time? Or is this time work better uh, for you next we'll, week? We'll go back to the 5 p.m. Eastern or EST slash EDT. Slash. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, watch our social media for Peter's epic screenshot of them doing the bait and switch on the title yeah. and they're, cover art. They're definitely transitioning, and it might be my fault because I don't have Audible set for auto update. No, no, come on, but it, it, it's okay. We can go on the rant about okay. how we love to hate Audible and Amazon and all its system, yet we still give it our money every month like the audiobook junkies that we are so we hope you will join us to get your fix of audiobook science fiction lit rpg epicness next week 5 p.m eastern standard time thank you good night you can catch us on discord 24 7 and we are looking forward to geeking out with more of you guys here soon my bye, bye.